right, there we go. Hey everyone, Richard Carlton here. Welcome to another great day of FileMaker training at fmtraining.tv. I'm the creator of fmtraining.tv where you can learn all about the FileMaker platform and learn how to build better FileMaker applications for you, your customers, your organization. This broadcast is completely free to everyone and is being broadcast in high definition to Discord, YouTube, and to Twitch. This broadcast is being recorded, which is really great. Of course, we might clean up the recording a little bit. So if we make a malfunction during the live stream, then of course we reserve the right to clean that up on the recording later on. However, because it's a live broadcast, we encourage you to ask questions. In fact, some people get aggravated when there's this dialogue with you and we ask questions. I, I, we want questions. If you have a question, odds are other people have the question too. And so I want to thank everyone for logging in, Ken and TK and Dave, uh, Dave One, Dave Learning, uh, Ed, uh, Elzo, uh, Carol, Jake, Mike, all of you, welcome once again to another great broadcast. Now, as a reminder, if you want to check out the upcoming broadcast, go to fmtraining.tv, press the left tab for the live button. You can see the upcoming broadcast schedule. That's pretty awesome. Additionally, if you want to help support this channel, right? We always say this, uh, this broadcast is brought to you by fmtraining.tv, bringing you the greatest and the most entertaining FileMaker training videos available. So the idea is that if you want to help support the channel, make sure you check out our on-demand video bundles. We have videos that cover the latest version of FileMaker. We have videos that cover the deploy course. In fact, we used to sell the courses individually anymore. It's just much simpler to sell a complete bundle for a low price. We do this on an annual basis. So if you buy one of the bundles, that really helps support the channel. It ensures that we can keep coming back every day because this broadcast actually takes a lot of money to run. The people here don't work for free. So today is going to be a continuation of the broadcast from yesterday. It's on, um, Nick calls it cross-reference, but basically this is a conversation on multi, uh, many to many relationships slash join tables. And Nick, uh, of course, to make things more simple for everyone, decided to come up with a third term for it, where he calls it cross-reference uh, tables. So today it's uh, day two on the on the cross-reference table. So, so yesterday we laid down the the principle of the cross-reference table. Uh, today I'm going to lead, to explain a little bit more, uh, a little bit uh, you know, deeper in the in the in this process to to create the the, the cross-reference table and why you need to you know to use this and how to avoid problems and uh, and I'm going to show you some uh, a real life um, uh, demonstration of why it is important and I'm going to to show you that uh, because we have to use this technique of uh, um, uh, cross reference table which is not a pharmacal technique it is a, it's a database technique okay it's data where database work technique it's not just um, it's not just pharmacal so, but because we need to use this technique, uh, I want to bring up that you have to now build a UI and a, and a UX that takes advantage of this, okay? It's an advantage, and I'm going to show you some example. So, uh, let me share my screen right quick here and uh, show you things here, okay? So yesterday we ex we know we discovered that we uh, you know we can hold on I'm going to remove this if I can okay uh, that you can get you have contacts you have accounts and then you can get multiple um, you know uh, multiple uh, contacts in uh, in multiple accounts so that that's the goal and to do this we build a cross reference table uh, which is a table between two tables that do here here in, in this example it's very clear what it's doing you know the record here is linking both you know this one and this one here you can see exactly what happened and then we have the discussion about the anchor buoy um we can have uh, if you want uh richard you can put on the on the on the agenda uh, uh, uh what's the name a discussion about the the anchor buoy yeah, uh, we're, more, we're working more, on looking on adding, adding that, but that'll be well well into April at this point. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because the uh, not not too much about the explanation between 
I don't want to talk about uh, oh uh, you know spider web uh, and bit uh, versus uh, um, what's the name um, what slider uh, connector. Enkobui. I want to I want to talk about Enkobui. I want to talk about how it works, why the advantage, the downsides, everything. Okay, so it will be it will be all about Enkobui. So, uh, but okay, so here in this example, we build an Enkobui that we we have our own anchor buoy anchor buoy okay so we have our own here for the cross reference table why is because then it is much more comfortable to uh, to understand and to must and to keep in control what the data are doing you know this is this is how you can get control you are your own environment and you have and you can do things from that environment instead of using uh, an occurrence that points to the table in another place where it wouldn't it, it wouldn't make sense in the future. You know, here in this example, it's kind of simple, but you have example where you can call, you can point to the same table in 10, 15, 20 different table of occurrence. So if you do an action, if you have an action happening in one of those scattered table of occurrence and and one day, two weeks, two months, two years from now, you want to change something, you will have to chase which one is doing the change. Um, it's it's not comfortable. When you have your own anchor, you know where to go straight away. You know, it's okay. Um, I need to I need to do some modification on the on the cross reference table kind of a uh, link, linkage, right? So you go straight to the to the anchor straight you don't have to chase which one it is for example here what we wanted to do yesterday we wanted to relook up two things inside the table okay inside the cross reference table we wanted to bring two information inside the table instead of doing or instead of having those the information to be uh, related so doing doing this you improve the um, you improve the the, the, well, the speed, the, the performance, right? Um, but there's some downside, and I'm going to explore that now. Okay. So yesterday we we say okay, that great uh, to have in the in the contact here is great to have the contact name to be a local field of that relationship, because then you are straight from once one down, right? You are there. You don't have to go from here to here, which is two levels. Here you have one level, okay? So it's faster, okay? It's faster to have this this design here. The problem of this is that we, we demonstrated yesterday that if I'm going here, at Richard, right? For example, this is a contact here. This is a this is the this is a record of this contact here. This record here. If I change the name, okay, it's not changing the name here. Why? Because I have no action that goes there, right, and do a relookup, right, like this. I have no things that are doing this. Now I do the relookup, Carlton's coming. And now here you can see it's uh -huh. now. Sorry? No, I just make a little noises. Yeah. Oh, yeah. the cat sound. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so you can see here. So now is in sync. So, you understand that you need to have an action here. So you say, okay, oh, yeah, Nick, but this is, yeah, I understand, I understand. But this is if you want to have performance. If you don't care about performance, you don't need that. You go straight to the to the record here, right? You go straight. So, but, but for performance issue, it's better to use that technique. So now I'm going to show you how to, uh, you know, how to make that uh, working, you know, uh, smoothly. So I've done here, you, you have the example in the UI UX uh, kind of for uh, UI UX design uh, sample file. So let me um, bring it up right quick. That's what well, you just my... gave it to us. So you can. No, no, my, sh my shortcut was broken or whatever. Okay. So uh, I, did, I, I did it here. Okay. Here you have Alvarez Smith, for example. Oh, Cal Richard Carlton is here. Okay. So. If I go to his contacts, um, okay, never mind. Okay, if I go to his contact and I change this, 
Okay, I remove this, for example, okay, and I go back to accounts. You will see that uh, Richard the Carlton is gone. So, and but and this is a cross reference table, and I have the technique of the relook up. Let me show you. So, cross reference table, and on the contact name here, right, I have the relook up, you know. I'm going to the account to the I'm going to the contact to get the name. Okay. So what happened? How 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 it works when you do this, right? And you go there and now you go back, bam, and you have the name coming. Okay. So very easy. Um, you have an on commit script. So you don't need to be afraid about exploring the I know, I know. You go online and you have all those, you know, uh, uh, fortune teller and uh, and uh, all those, uh, what's the name, um, uh, apocalyptic kind of, uh, you know, um, uh, how you call that, you know, the people that tell you the, the you know, the doom and gloom people, okay? So uh, if you go and they say, oh, never use the on record comment stuff, those are what you've done. Okay, uh, this is absolutely not true. You can is, it, is that like on, a negative Nancy? A negative Nancy or a, yeah, yeah, whatever. You know, doom and gloom people, I call them. But yeah, so don't be afraid to use on record coming. You know, I, I don't think I have one layout still that doesn't have one. I mean, it's uh, the, all my layout has this, you know, the on layout enter and the, the on record commits and the, the on record load. I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, I, I've it's not a problem now if on record commits you have two hundred thousand line scripts that last 15 minutes to perform you have a problem right but here on record commit look what i have you know i have this i have a perform script on server right and i don't even wait for the completion that means so now you should be a gurus in perform script on servers so but I'm, i can refresh your mind so what happened here? When I commit a record here, okay, I collect, I collect uh, in, 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 the commit, in the commit, I'm collecting the ID of the contact I'm in. Okay? I'm in, I'm, you know, I have the ID of the contact. Then what does scripts do? Okay. So uh, here, what the scripts do? Uh, I get the I get the what whatever is out the the script parameter. Okay, I create a variable. Why? Because I'm performing a find, and to perform a find, you need a variable. Otherwise, you can't you can't pass the information. So I get I, I create this variable with the current contact ID, right? Then I go to the layout, the cross reference table layout, right? So, uh, and and then here I perform a find. That means I collect, I go, and I say, okay, oh, by the way, I want the account ID, the contact ID, this this contact ID. So that means I will have like maybe if the guy is in two or three accounts, let's say Richard Carlton is in three companies, in three accounts, this result here, this result will get you free records. Free, free records. Right, and then I'm doing on free records. I'm doing a relookup on the ID, the contact, ID, the foreign contact, uh, the foreign key of the contact ID. Okay, so you can imagine on the server, locally on server, such action is like unperceivable. It's unperceivable, you know. He search for what ID, and he relook he relook up on what top max ten records. Oh, let's say, okay, let's say I have 1,000 records, even 1,000 records, right? So that's why you can do that. So, and on the client perspective, okay, it's unperceivable neither. Why? Why? It's because I perform the script on server, and I don't even wait for the completion. So why the hell, you will say, why you don't wait? Because I don't care about waiting. <laughs> 
do the do the fix do do the update you know i don't what, what, i don't need to see that immediately why it's because when you do the change here right the change happened in another table you don't even see right now i don't see the, the i am there i'm in contact so i don't see it right so do the change you know okay do it you know uh, my server is working for me right now you know or you do this you you commit bam it's gone it's it's like for the for the client there's nothing to wait for okay and if you go back to the account oh, okay i have my name back right and let's say you have let's say you are a very tortuous guy uh and you want to see the thing happening you know okay so let's show you uh yeah so let's show you the thing happening uh you know because you want to see okay and uh, so you see the, the record is here. And I remove this and I commit. Bam. You see, it happened a little bit later, right? Because, uh, you know, you do this, bam. Oh, oh, oh. I changed the here. Okay. Okay, so if you do this, yeah, because, oh, I click on follow up, sorry. I keep I, I keep clicking on this button, uh, the follow up stuff here. So uh, so here so you have the the ritual here. Okay, I go I click here, bam. See, so no no worries about this, right? It's uh, it's a very, it's a very good it's a very cool technique and stuff like that. so that. So let's say let's say for example you have multiple like I'm, I'm I have an example here. Uh, you have multiple uh, RCC is the best internet connection. Rishan and Nick both in the chorus. It's not. It's not a question. It's not a question. <laughs> no, 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 no. So uh, uh, because I'm monitoring things. Uh, so you understand. So if you let's say you have multiple. Let's say, okay, yeah, Nick. Uh, okay, uh, I need uh, the the I have the contact name in multiple different cross reference tables. Not only on, not only on this one. I have on five of them. Okay. So oh, you have on five of them. Okay. Pam 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 pam. You this you 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 the go to this layout we look up. Go to this layout we look up. Go to this layout we look up. This is what you need to do. It's very simple, right? It's very it's very simple. You know, there's absolutely nothing uh, fancy here. Uh, you know, it's simple. Uh, it's keep simple. I mean, uh, you understand the the logic here. Uh, if, if let's say you have ten tables here. And you don't perform script on server. Ah, I will say mm, 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 because you need to go to the layout and uh, locally, and you need to perform a farm locally, and you need to redo couple locally. Uh, this, this without the perform script on server is yeah, okay. It's like the because it's you will you will commit. You will commit, and you will have like a like this, you know, like a, a slide up like this, like a, a, a fifty-eight, uh, you know, um, a beach ball, like a slide, a you know, half, almost one second delay. Okay, if you are locally, okay. Yeah. So, but if you do that on server, and you don't wait, the completion, no, you don't, you don't care, you don't care, you know, you don't feel it. So you see, it's uh, it's a. Uh, Everything needs to be done in a in a certain way. You have rules, right? Yeah, yeah. Real quick, so what, when we're uh, doing um, in aviation or military type stuff, uh, we call this fire and forget. We talk about it in our video training course. So you you can fire PSOS, as most of you know. But for those of you who missed the PSOS, go back to the live streams from a couple of weeks ago, and we covered PSOS in great detail, and also transferring found set. But you you need to decide when you run PSOS whether you need to know the results. Or you don't need to know the results. In this case, you don't need. So it's a fire and forget. You pull the trigger, and it goes off, and flies off. And you can ignore it because it's automatically self-managing itself, right? And you can go on about something else. So basically, you've got two brains, two processors, totally different tracks going like that. It's really great. So what I call fire and forget. You fired it off. You forget about it because it's so simple that it's. It's not going to not work. Does that make sense? It's a double negative, but it's so simple, it always works, right? So there we go. Yeah. So, so Bilbo, uh, Bilbo's talking. This is your Bilbo, right? Is yeah, it's my Bilbo. Baggies! He's a so, 
but he's typing, but nothing's coming up. So he types yeah, very so slow. Move, yeah, he's in Switzerland. Time to come back to you know Switzerland. You know Switzerland. We say in Europe, the Switzerland are slow people. Right? The Baggins yeah, wants slow. to know. I have understood that this technique is extremely fast. However, it takes more work to implement than just another TO. That's correct. The the um, it's it's a little bit more work. Listen, so PSOS comes into play when people complain about your solution going slow, right? So like if Megan's, Megan's over here, and let's take a look at Megan real quick. Here's Megan. So, but Megan is kind of in this begin, probably beginner, but she'd watch our training. So she's maybe towards more towards intermediate. And if I go to the live stream discussion over here, this is what, if I can go down here, that's Megan right there. We love Megan. Megan's fantastic. She had her teeth pulled out, uh, her wisdom teeth. So she's not very happy, but She's to the point where if she builds a solution for Amy Sheely, who's her boss, and it goes slow, and Amy goes, ah, that's just slow, then, then Megan has to look at what are the tools, what are the tricks I have to make it go faster? What are the tools in my pocket? So is this a tool? Can I use this to make it go faster? Maybe. Is this a tool? I can make it go faster? Oh, this is okay. Can these, can these be used pro, uh, to positive gain? Everything we're talking to you about today are tools. You don't have to use them, but you might want to think about it, especially if people start complaining about performance. So that's where this comes in. So there you go. So, Belbo, if it's only you and no one's complaining about speed, don't bother with PSOS, please. Just do it as easiest way you know how, right? So there you go. Yeah, so uh, I didn't understand really the question. I have understood that technique is extremely fast. Okay, however, it takes more work to implement than just an adding another TO. Uh, it's more mental gymnastics. It's the the, cog the cognitive overhead, the mental gymnastics. Oh, you mean the uh, of, you of mean using the... PSOS? Because you have to think about, oh, you're going to fire PSOS. It's going to do this. It's going to do that. It's going to uh, fire and forget or not fire. You have to transfer the. Yeah, but in that set. case, I don't understand why uh, uh, creating a TO will help the go. Make, running the, their... running it local. R running a piece of code locally will always be more mentally simple than uh will be always more mentally uh, simple than uh yeah sure uh, than I doing mean, off, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually actually uh, actually uh, in my in, i don't know maybe because i'm french but um the, the 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 thing is to say okay uh you you have a package and you and you know you have the you have the fedex guy coming to your door okay here the package fedex do it yourself instead of for you know uh, and then you FedEx deal with that, right? So, uh, so, so you have two different processes. Uh, and as you said, um, the ad that's many really advantage of doing this. Sometimes I'm using pesos even if I don't need them, okay? Uh, because because it's uh, mental, well, as you said, mentally. Well, well you're, but you're yeah. used to it, Nick. We're talking a lot of brand new people. Yeah, here. I understand. And, yeah, and, and, and but, so, yeah. When you're an experienced like Kyle, Kyle, Kyle. Okay, I'm going to be honest with everyone here, Kyle. Uh, I, I want to use the S word, but I've been told that I might be monitored by uh, powers upon high, so I can't use the S word too much. But uh, Kyle uh, poops out, how we say this, JSON and SQL and whatever else and uh, custom functions for fun. He, 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 he dreams about JSON at night. So for him, it's, there's no mental gymnastics there for him. But if you have a FileMaker person and they have to pass a script parameter and they can just put it as text or they can code it as JSON, they have to mentally jump through the gymnastics of that. As a trainer, I have to identify that 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 hurdle. It's a friction point. It's not a friction point for Nick because he's gone over it. So Nick has gone over it in his mind so many times. He's worn it down. Now it's smooth. But in Megan's mind, in a lot of people's mind, it's a it's a sharp knife, man. Like for example, if this is your friction point with your knife and you keep running over this over and over and over again, you're going to round it off. It's going to be nice and rounded and smooth like this. And it just does. But if you're new to PSOS and you're trying to do it, you're going to stick yourself on that. It yeah. doesn't mean it's not worth it. It yeah. just means that mentally you've got to think about that sharp edge and not cutting yourself on it. For example, what if you do as a brand new person, you have to think, well, should I fire and forget or should I monitor it? Right. And, 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 and you have to think about what the consequences that will be. Is there a process on the other end that if it fails, it melts the whole system and everything goes down? No, so relookup. What possibly could go wrong with a relookup? Well, yeah. very few things, right? So I'm just saying, Nick, well, I guess I'm saying you're Nick and you're French and we understand it. We have to take that into account. But I'm translating for all the beginning people here. So I'm like your translator, okay? Yeah. So. But it's, uh, uh, if you know, uh, one day uh, during this uh, 
session has said, oh, I'm going to tell you all my tricks sometime when something, so when something pops out, I'm going to. And today, I think I just, it just popped to my mind and I have one trick that I can share to you right now. So, uh, and because it, I used it yesterday night and uh, I have the opportunity to do it right now. So I'm doing it uh, after that, I will forget. You know, sometimes you have a problem when you do an on commit stuff. So you commit something, right? But you don't, you didn't get already the results of the commit because you get the commit, you get the result after the commit happened. You know, for example, you get always, you get the result of the previous commit because you need to commit the commit to be done to get the results. Uh, updated from related data. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, uh, but you know when you say when when you when you trigger something on commit, it happened before the commit ends. Okay, so the 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 when you say on commit, it said when you when you start the action of committing, you trigger the script, and then the commit happened, right? It's not like I commit the record and then I trigger the re I trigger the scripts. So in order to get the commit to happen and then get the updates information of the committing, hear what I'm using. Uh, I commit the record, right? I commit it. In the script here, I do exactly the same thing. I perform the script here, right? I'm performing the script on server. And then I said, okay, server, I love you, server. But you know what? You're going to pause this for two seconds. Okay, so here what happened. Uh, when you need the commit <laughs> yep. to be done. I've run into this before. I just, I'm like, what the hell? Now I know what you're doing. I've seen this. Yes, go ahead. Okay, so when you need the commit to be, to be done, you need the commit to be effective to be done gone done okay okay and then you need the information and then you want to spread the information somewhere okay so here you do the commit okay so let's say i'm i'm removing this okay i remove this commit happen okay so you have all this blah 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 okay and here uh, okay, it, it it went to. Uh, there's too many. This uh, uh, wasn't it? Oh, I click on the. Oh, I click on the button again. Pfft, okay, now you know why those button. Are, I don't. I hate those button in the middle of the face here. Okay, so. Um, okay, I click here. The commit happened. The commit will trigger the scripts, right? The script starts wait for two seconds, but the commit is done already, right? So then two seconds after, oh, okay, I go boom, 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 and I relook up. <laughs> so, so that means the commit, it's done over, and then the thing happened. Can I, can I interject and help a little bit right here? So this yeah. is a timing issue. As you begin to become more of an intermediate advanced developer, you're going to run into timing issues with FileMaker, things that you can't account for, bizarre behaviors that you can't account for, and sometimes forcing FileMaker to take a breath. Because remember, FileMaker's like, <laughs> it's running really fast, <laughs> and it's going really fast. <laughs> and, and when you do that all together in a single script, it's mostly okay. But when you're jumping between client, server, and PSOS, there's what we call timing issues. And you need to make sure that the commit, when you tell the server to commit, so we told the server to do two things. One thing is commit the record and save it to the, basically to the hard drive, to memory kind of. And then the other one is run this PSOS. There could be a situation for whatever reason that the commit takes a little bit of time to execute, but the PSOS gets there ahead of it. And then, so the PSOS is trying to do a relookup, but it can't see the committed data, the saved data yet. So you need to make sure that the commit is saved it's almost like this pause, a stutter step. It's like a, a stutter step. And then it continues. That that mostly ensures that that record will have been properly saved and it's accessible. Does that make sense, everyone? So it's a timing issue. And a lot of times you don't run into timing issues, but then you get these weird little moments. And sometimes it's better to get FileMaker or pause so it can go, it is one breath, and then it keeps going. That'll yeah. force much better behavior, right? Does that make yeah. sense, everyone? 
but here but here yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, here the my my biggest issue that i have and i think everybody here uh, experienced that one day you have kind of you have some dates you relate and the dates uh, update happen when you have related uh, based on related records for example um and if you change the related record and you commit the, re the you commit the records um you don't get the updates of the latest change you made you 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 get the update of the previous change because the change of related records needs to have an effective commit uh so but you what you said is right too okay the you know the the timing uh the give you give some bre briefing to a, a, a briefing to the you know to, to the to the solution say okay hey wait a little bit because you know the you know um make sure um people are using intensively um a refresh you know they use refresh in intensively refresh window refresh window with some most of the, which is like atomic bomb uh in terms of performance uh is bad uh when you just need to do oh yeah okay you know what can you wait a tenth of a second for me please just a tenth of a second like it's in person you can't even see that right and just because you did that you give to pharmacists yeah okay Thank you for the breath. Uh, now I can go. But here, uh, in in this, when you need when you need data to happen, when you need a commit to be co to be effective to get the result that uh, comes from related records, and then you need something to happen on commit after, uh, you use this technique. You use this, the the advantage of the performance script on server where you don't wait. Remember, you don't wait for it. I'm not going to wait for that. The server is going to wait for that. Okay. And you say, okay, I put two seconds to be large, you know, to be like safe. Uh, I'm way safe with this two seconds because in terms of c computing, two seconds is, is like an eternity, okay? Uh, I could have said, uh, uh, yeah, I could have this, uh, like this, 0 0.2 seconds. I could have said that. But because I want to make sure <clears throat> that thing happened. And and I don't need and I, and I don't care. I could have said ten seconds if I because I don't need the information right away, right? So anyway, so that was you know the you know the the the, the, the commercial break for Nick's uh, tricks. Okay, so um, and I think this trick is good. So I, I want to show you some real world uh, kind of for, um, solution here, and uh, and I, I want to see you that you know I have a mini. Uh, I'm using this technique of uh, having the anchor for the for the cross reference table as well. Uh, those here, uh, those subsections, subsection section, those are they are not named cross reference, but they are, they are okay. So and this here, uh, the, these are cross reference. So for example, here I have a cross reference table from the subsection data to material. Okay, here I have another one from section data to subsection data. And here I have another one to materials to suppliers, you know. So why I have those cross-reference table all the time? So, I, you know, I have a many, many, many cross-reference table here. You know, uh, if you if, if I go there, sorry, if I go there, you can see here I have five, okay? Five cross-reference table. So why, why this? Uh, it's because, um, it's because the, um, you can have uh, one. Uh, let me let me bring let me bring the the thing here. Okay, so you have here you have items. So you have items. Okay, which is they are materials. Okay, and of course, of course, one material, you know, have a supplier, but one material can have multiple suppliers. Okay, I can have multiple, you know, I can have this, 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 okay. I can have multiple supplier for one material. Okay, and of course, the same supplier has multiple material, right? You know what I mean? So, so here it's the, it's the, 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 the perfect example of the cross reference table usage because I have one supplier that has many, many, many materials, and one material that can have multiple suppliers, right? 
So that's why the, the, the cross-reference table is very important. So if, if, I, if, I, see, if I see the cross-reference table here, this one, the, it's the cross the four. So you see, uh, I ten, I'm, I'm numbering my, my cross reference table like this one, two, three, four, five, because this we don't care. This is just for referral, you know, this is for referral material supplier, but I care about the number. Oh, I'm in the four, you know, I don't care about my, I'm in the, I'm in the four. So, so it's very easy. You go there, you go to the four, right? You don't even read it. Right? And you can see here, I have some lookup, not much, right? So on all my on all here I have some lookup here I don't have because I don't need but here I have some you know I have some lookup the description the picture the title um, here I have some lookup too right so I put some lookup the material uh, so I, have, I I need some I need to bring stuff there right so I have some lookup and uh, so but what I want to point out here it's how I can get this technique of the of the of the cross reference table to my own advantage okay here i bring a, a carl star window and what this is this is the list of my suppliers you know here i am in suppliers okay if i, I look this i said uh get uh, uh, a layout table okay i'm in suppliers and I said, okay, you know what? I want this one, this one, this one, this one. So I'm in supplier list here. So what I've done here, I collected, I have collected here in my in a variable. Uh, what I, what I have done here, I have collected the uh, current. Hold on. Uh, should the, be their like primary key or whatever, right? Yeah. Yeah, it should be here. It should name. It should be named like. Uh, Material like that one. Uh, no. Uh, it should be with character new, new something. No, new. Okay, okay. New supplier ID. Okay, those are the four I selected. Those are the four suppliers that I've selected. Okay. Yep. I've selected those four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Very easy, you know. And if I had one, uh, now I have five. You know, it's a uh, new supplier ID. Uh, okay. Now I have five. Right. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So I have those five selected guys. And now what I'm saying here, I say, okay, hey, I want to validate this. So it's very easy. It's very super freaking easy. Okay. Um, first of all, if 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 I have nothing, forget about it. I freeze the window and I say, okay, uh, now I need to count the value. I need to count how many things I have. So okay, the value count says, the value count says I have five guys. Okay, yeah, is that correct? I have five selected, so I I, I have five guys, five ideas um, in my in my what's the name in my here in my uh, this variable here has five ideas, five counts. Okay, then I go to the material supplier cross reference uh, table kind of layout. You know, I'm going to the layout of the cross reference table. Okay, and then I need to create I need create I need to create records, right, and. So I say I start my counter. You know the loop technique with the counter, right? Uh, I explained to you many times. I create a new record, and then I say, okay. By the way, I am my current material ID. The material I want, the material I want those suppliers to be connected to, is the current material ID. This is the material I am in. Uh, you know the, the 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 material I want the supplier to be connected to. So it's easy. I have it in my I have it in a variable. And then I say, okay, by the way, uh, I just create one. I'm in the I'm in the first count, I'm in the first record that I created, counter one. Go there, set the set the field, the supplier ID field, get the value of this list of the five that I've selected, get the value number one and and put that in that field. Then go to the number two. Yeah, it's still the same material. We have one, it's, it's the same material, but I have the second uh, supplier. Go again, create a new one. Again, the same material, but then I'm a third, a fourth, a fifth. And then when you arrive to the fifth, when the value count, the five, equal the counter, that means you arrive one, two, three, four, five. Stop everything, exit the loop. That great, I'm good. Thank you very much. I appreciate your help. Thank you for coming, bye-bye. Okay, so 
you see how very super duper easy it is to now connect because I have my fantastic nice UI here where I can select multiple ones. Okay. Right. And it's great. And also it tells me uh, when, when one supplier is already selected, uh, I don't see where, I don't see, I don't see, I don't see. It should, it should have tell me which one is selected. Anyway. So uh, you got the point here. So this is, um, this is great because, uh, it, it shows you the, what the cross-reference table can do, right? So, um, so here the same is the same for everything. You know, when you have uh, here, I have a subsection. Let's say I have a subsection. What what is a subsection? It's a group of material. Let's say you know when you want to build something. Let's say you want to build uh, this stuff here. Uh, you need some material. You need some item related to this. You know, you need concrete. You need, uh, you know, uh, stone. You need the sand. You need, you know, let's say you, you want to do masonry stuff. That's what you need, right? So you create your you you create your subsection. You create a brand new subsection, for example, like this. Okay, you say okay, this this this. Okay, you create your your subsection, and then so you have your subsection created. You know, uh, test Nick. Okay. You, and then you want to attach material to this one. So before I was showing you the list of material suppliers, right? Now I want to connect that. I want to add multiple material to this guy. Okay. So if I get the layout, uh, the layout uh, table name, okay, I am in material now. Okay. So this this here shows me the a material list and i say okay oh i need this uh and i need this and uh you know i need this you know and i need this okay so that's what i need inside i need this i need you know this and okay so this is what i need okay i need those seven guys so i use exactly the same technique same thing absolutely the same see the script looks exactly the same and you know why it looks the same because I keep duplicating the same script. I duplicate the same script, bam, 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 like this. Because the construction is always the same, okay? You have a material list, and you have one record, the subsection. You want to add multiple material to the subsection you selected. So you bring the, uh, 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 the car star window showing you the material. You select the IDs, bam, 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 okay? You count the ID, you go to the layout for the XRAF, the cross-reference table, you start counting, you create a new record, you set the current subsection ID, and then you say, okay, oh, I want the first of the list, I want the second of the list, I want the third of the list, I want the fourth. When it's done, you get out, you close the window, right? So, and it's always the same kind of construction, always the same, and the result is instant, right? You have an instant result, right? So, and, and again, and again, and again, if I go to section builder, for example, so you, you know what I mean? The material, you have multiple suppliers. The subsection, you have multiple uh, items. And the section, the, not the subsection, and the section, what it is, it's a group, it's a group, you know, it's a group of subsection. So I want here all my subsection, and I want to add multiple. I want this subsection, you know, I want this one, I want this one, this one. Okay. So any again, look this. I want because it's important I show you this. The same damn script, a little bit different here because I need to do more things. Okay. I need to validate. So now you understand if you see what I'm doing here. So uh because it depends where you are, by the way. You know, it depends where you are. When you are in the estimate, when you are in the builder, okay. I am in the builder. So here what I'm doing. You're doing this, so if I'm in the builder, bam, I get exactly the same damn script. It's exactly the same. Do this, go there, create new, and go away when you're done. It's exactly the same thing, right? So that's why it's great you to get inspired by this, because um, uh, and I use this in my UI UX here. It's exactly so that's why uh, I know you guys. I heard you. I know what you said. Oh, we want to simplify. We, you have it. I'm using exactly the same script here. You know, when you want to add uh, contact, you have the list here. 
you select your contact. <coughs> yeah, we okay. already we already covered this how to do this previously. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's... and you you select this, and bam! Look at this. Another file, completely different file. Another file, completely different. And bam! I have the same record. I have the same script. And you know why? Because I copy and paste the same damn script. And 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 what I have to do is the same technique. Always, always, always the same. So I, I just change this. I re I, I remap the field here. I remap the field here, and that's it. And what I have my I have my tech, my stuff done. You know, it's it's done. You know, I don't need to do anything. Right, this is the beauty of this, okay. And also, it's a great demonstration of what we keep saying about the lean design technique and stuff like that. Keep a st keep your standard, build your own standard. That means you have a technique, you keep it, and you keep reusing it, and you reusing it, and you re reusing it. I I personally love this technique of bringing the car style window, selecting multiple things, and then validate. I love this, okay, uh, because it works so well. It's super visual, and uh, and it gives you freedom. It gives you like, okay, you click this, you select people, you see, for example, oh, those are already selected. You can select them again. Yep. Why why you want to select those guys? They are there already. Yeah, you know, um, so. So it's a, yeah yeah so so see so so the, to get the linkage to get the linkage between the the cross reference table what is for here you have an account table here you have an account record and here those are the contact record right and what you want to do you want to select contacts and then you want the system to say okay by the way now you create records to create a link between account and the contact I selected between this account on the background here and those three here, I want you to create a link between those three and you show me in the list. A number of questions. There was some uh, conversation. It started with Ruben up above. He says, what is better or faster, a lookup or a calculated uh, lookup, basically? Okay, so uh, the calculated lookup uh, has, a, has a very a very a very different meaning than the, the lookup. Okay. Um, I I don't use the calculator lookup too much uh, because most of the time you need the calculator lookup to uh, overcome kind of a, some flaws you have in your uh, in your um, construction. Okay, most of the time when you need to do that. Uh, in terms of fast, not the same. There's no because it's using exactly the same as. Um, you know, um, is using the same um, principle, the same engine. So, no, it's not faster. Okay. Um, then that was one question. Then the next question was from Stu. So, Stu is kind of a new, I guess, kind of a new person here on Discord a little bit. Um, underscore Stu. There he is, or she is. Uh, how do you pre prevent duplicated... How, no, how do you prevent duplicates in the cross-reference cross table? It looks like yeah, you filtered them out. Because, uh, yeah, a good question. Perfect question. I love the question. Because it involves design. If you have duplicated, uh, in, if you have a duplication in the cross-reference table, it's because you, you, uh, you have at one point uh, uh, allowed the duplication to happen. Uh, here, for example, I... I, I I noticed this problem, right? Uh, when when I like, uh, ten years ago, when I came with this technique here of selecting, but I didn't have this elegant card style window. But I had a I had a window popping up, okay, like this, and I had uh, people selecting what they want to select. Um, I had the same. I had the issue, okay. And now uh, we have the hiding object kind of for take, uh, possibility. We can hide an object. So not only I'm 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 showing a, a different a different uh, visual here, but the button to select is gone. See here, this is a hand. You see the hand here. You have a hand. No hand. No hand. No. So I use this also this visual to get to emphasize to highlight that the fact that this you can select this not select no. Okay. So what I'm doing here. I bring up the list of the IDs inside this portal, okay? 
So here I bring up selected, see here, see uh, where it is, uh, current account ID, you know, uh, it's here, current, con uh, sorry, current contact IDs. And they are the list of whatever inside this, okay? So this here brings, this here gives me the list of all the ID that I have there. Now, based on this list, in this layout, I say, okay, if the if the ID of this record is in the list in in this uh, in this uh, uh, variable here, okay, current uh, contact IDs, if the ID of the guy is there, uh, hide the button, hide the button, and change the conditional visual on this to make sure that I see a checkbox gray, a check mark gray. Okay. So now you see immediately, oh, this guy there uh, is there already. So I don't need to, here I can select, but this guy is there. Right. So I don't, I don't deal with the problem because I, I prevent the problem to happen. So most of the time, what you need, to, when something happened to you, you have a, like a duplication, a duplicate, you need to know, okay, how I can prevent that to happen. Not, don't treat you know, if you, okay, if you smoke five pack of cigarette a day and you cough, don't treat the cough, stop smoking. So it's, it's, it's pretty much the same thing here, okay? Uh, so if you have a problem, like the duplicates, uh, try to catch up the problem before it happens. That, my, that is my advice to you, and you will see it. Well, and most of the time, it happened because you don't have a UI that that we, we come back always to the same to the same conclusion here. You need a support to have a UI, and then on in the UI you can have the user experience. And here the user experience is what oh the UI experience is said okay the, the guy is already there. I take care of that for you. You don't have the button. You cannot select the guy. And I'm telling you here I'm showing you it's selected. Okay, so this is a user experience. So I hope I uh, answered the question correctly. Oh, it's, ac it's actually quite good. So um, we are kind of in a pl uh, landing mode here. What I want to do is bring up a couple important things. So those of you who are asking questions about Anchor Buoy and this whole conversation about uh, basically minute-to-minute -minute relationships. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put Nick down here just briefly. I'm going to minimize that. I'm going to close this stuff here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our on-demand video training. For those of you who don't have our on-demand training, once again, we talked about this a second ago. Uh, the, the question was Amco was asking about, hey, where's the Go training? Got Already got it right here. Um, if you want to see the latest videos that we've posted, you have the video player here. What you're going to do is you're going to say update to the latest videos. You can run all courses, which is everything historically. So if you think there's something wrong with like an older course or something, you want that, you can press this button here. If you say only get the current courses, it gets that top section of courses, including the live streams. It gives you that information. So even if you don't have our paid subscription to our training, this file is useful because it still shows you uh, the current uh, live streams that are free. So we were posted up through the 12th. Um, and then we're going to start posting, I think, yesterday's broadcast as well. So we're always posting them in here, um, etc. We are working to make the download links a little bit more obvious. That's a new version of this player that's coming up. This is player 44. Player 45 will have that improvement. So if I go back over here and I take a look at the course we have. So these are the current courses right here. Legacy courses are down here. If I do a search up here, I just type mini in here. Uh, I'm going to get the mini to mini uh, relationship uh video there's a lot of words with the word mini in here uh let me see mini to mini so for those of you who want to see kind of the, it's very it's it's a it's a basic mini to mini conversation with join tables barely kind of yesterday's conversation today's conversation is kind of a mm, more of an extension of what what once you have a join table or, or a mini to mini or ref, cross reference table what can you do with it in terms of lookups, things like that? This is just the basics. It's animated down here. It's my way of explaining it very different than the way Nick explains it. So that's down here right here. If you're looking for Anchor Buoy, um, same thing. Uh, it's the benefit of actually having 
uh, a training group here where we have more than one trainer because we train the same materials differently. Nick, Nick is a French artist. How much more different can that be from an American who has very little art skill, right? So, um, so I go anchor buoy up here. I'm going to scroll down here. It prioritizes the live streams ahead. Uh, well, no, what is it? It pri prioritizes the pro courses, then the live streams after that. It, it does a provide a sort here. So anchor buoy design methodology one and two, 1130, 1131. If you have any questions about anchor buoy and you don't want to wait a month, watch these. These are animated. We do stuff with these that Nick can't do. It's presented my way, which is different than Nick. Um, and so you might like Nick's way, you like my way. If you watch both of them, you should have it mastered. But we spent a lot of cycles in here already on this. We talked briefly about the performance section of video. So I'm going to go back to um, the Pro 19 course. I'm going to move Nick out of the way briefly here. So if I go down here to the 1000 section, there's the 1000, the 1000 old. So th this section right here is the new section. All these Bs on here are the new videos we did on performance. They're very new. If you look at them, they have that kind of a more modern aesthetic that I use with the, the camera and stuff. These are all pretty intense. They're all brand new and they're designed from beginning towards uh, the intermediate. So that kind of wraps up today's conversation. Tomorrow's kind of a little bit more of an open ended kind of conversation on cascading deletes. It's one thing to do cascading ads. It's something else uh, uh, to do cascading deletes. They're very dangerous. That's literally like giving your uh, your seven or eight year old a power electric power saw and turning them loose in the backyard. Um, <laughs> it's a good analogy. Uh, it's very dangerous. I don't. I tell my engineers not to use it. Whenever they do use it, or whenever someone comes to me and says, "My dog ate my homework. FileMaker ate my data. I swear it was there yesterday." Either they don't know what they're talking about, or they have a cascading delete that's running wild somewhere, probably. So that's what we have to look at. Anyway, that's it for now. Appreciate it. We'll catch everyone tomorrow. Thank you. Bye-bye. collected the quarterback great read good patience more importantly great job up front protecting this quarterback to give you a chance and that's all you can ask for try to rally down 10 925 to go here in the fourth short motion by Amendola from the left Brady takes the shot to step stands in throws it left for Amendola reaches up and snaps a high throw and lands inside the 10 Ooh. rolling with an eye oh. slightly behind him again he makes the grab